Hi, I'm Carol Jurgensen Sheets, aka Carol the Coach, and this is my buddy Boo here. Huh, Boo? Are you looking at that coffee? You love coffee with cool whip, don't you? Um, we're here tonight to talk to you about something that um, is near and dear to my heart. It's about sex addiction. And it's about what you can do to make your life feel more controlled and more manageable in a tough situation. If you're a sex addict, I know you're on this video because you want to get help. You want to get healthy. You want to make the people that uh, you love so dearly understand that you're sorry and you're ready to, to make the tough changes. If you're a partner, what I believe to be true is that you have been devastated, wounded, and it's so scary to think that you're going to trust this guy or this woman again. But I'm here to share some hope, strength, and recovery that most sex addicts and their partners reconciliate. It takes anywhere from two, three, four, or five years. And part of that depends on how hard you work, and part of it depends on how much trauma you've had previous to the sex addiction. You know, the men and women that I work with that have addictive issues, they hate themselves. There is a lot of self-loathing. Um, yes, they've hid it from you. They've kept it away from you because they wanted that double life. They wanted that dual situation. They needed as much uh, fantasy, arousal, and numbing as they could get to fill that hole inside of them. And that's why they've taken such extreme measures to deal with the extreme, uh, we call it the wounded soul. And with a certified sexual addictions therapist and with a partner trauma specialist, the two of you can be happy again. But it does take work and it does take him if he's the addict, helping you, if you're the partner, to get better. While he also works on his own recovery. So they happen simultaneously. They're not separate. He doesn't have to do his work first and then become whole and help you. Early couples recovery means that he needs to help you get healthier by doing the things that he knows that he can do to begin to provide just that small basis of safety and stabilization that you so badly need to keep your feet on the ground and to move forward. And so that's what a certified sexual addictions therapist will hopefully help the addict with and a certified clinical partner specialist from APSATS will help the partner do. And maybe he'd be lucky enough to get somebody who has both those certifications. I've known it to happen because I'm one of those people. So I'm very sensitive to the sex addict and what he or she needs and wants, how he or she has felt, and how he or she wants to repair the relationship. Now, I've had partners that say, hey, I don't know that I can trust this guy. I don't know if... It's safe to believe that he really wants what he says he wants. What if he's duping me again? Well, there are some things that we do to ensure that he isn't duping you again. You know, we do a full disclosure. That's a process, sometimes a three, four, five, six, seven, eight week process where all the information comes out. You get all the facts. You get all your questions answered to the best of your ability. And then he takes a polygraph test to prove to you that he was honest. That helps to build some trust. And then there are regular polygraph tests after that um, to ensure that he hasn't reverted back, he hasn't relapsed, which means he's gone back to some serious old behaviors, or he hasn't slipped. He hasn't played around with those things that he's not supposed to because they'll take him to that next level of sexual addiction. 
The other thing is, you know, really, your therapist should be pretty attuned to what is going on. Um, if your therapist knows neurolinguistic programming, and if your addict happens to be right-handed, the therapist can tell whether he is constructing something or he's remembering it. It really helps when somebody has a tendency to lie. And you know what they say about addicts is that they, they created and continue this behavior based on lying. And so lying is their middle name. Now, I'm not saying sex addicts are liars, but I am saying that they have a basis for um, misguiding you, lying by omission, not being honest, being deceitful. I wouldn't call them a name, but I will say all those things are absolutely prevalent and necessary if you're going to maintain a sexual addiction. So we have to be realistic. The good news is the people that walk into my office office want to get better and they do get better because they work on themselves and the relationship at the same time so if anybody's here to tell you well wait till he gets healthy wait till she gets healthy you know that they're misguided and they're not following the new treatment modalities that helps addicts and partners alike for more information you can contact me at Carol at carolthecoach.com or listen to my radio show Monday nights, 9 o'clock Eastern Standard Time, or you can um, subscribe for it, to it for free on iTunes. Um, that's Sex Help with Carol the Coach, and it's on Blog Talk Radio. Just Google me. You'll get all that information. Because I'm here to disseminate information to help you get through this and they, to make you both feel safe and rebuild that relationship and grow stronger as a result. I'll see you next time.